big empty void. That's true. <laughs> and uh, our, the magnetic field around the Earth deflects most of that, as you see in the video. And then some of it gets through, gets captured, and then uh, shows up as the northern or southern lights, the aurora borealis, and uh, the aurora uh, Austria, let's say, in the southern hemisphere. So that's, that's space radiation. So uh, when, when you see the northern lights, um, it's pretty special, but I want you to remember um, that's just showing you how how uh, magnetic field around the Earth is protecting us and allowing us to be alive. Um, a little bit about NASA's purpose. Uh, so uh, when, when NASA was founded, its purpose was to send people into space, to, live, uh, to learn to live and work in space. And uh, in the 1960s, the Saturn V rocket on the left was developed, and uh, that, was allowed, that enabled us to land uh, humans on the moon. And uh, you, you've all probably seen pictures from the, the Apollo missions. And uh, I like to show these of our um, astronauts uh, next to an American flag on the moon. And um, maybe a little bit different flavor from the talks I gave earlier to the younger students, but it's important that our country uh, maintains preeminence in space. Space is critical for our, uh, for our daily lives and for our future. And um, I would say if we don't, uh, we don't carry on that torch uh, of what's been done before us, our, um, it'll be lost. There are, are other nations that, um, that seek to do uh, what NASA has done and, and, um, and also be a All right, so NASA does a lot of So in 2014, um, NASA launched the, uh, our new space vehicle, uh, the Orion capsule, on, um, on the Delta IV heavy rocket from ULA. Uh, and we did two orbits to test out the new, the new capsule. Uh, and uh, the next flight is planned fairly soon. I think it's, I think it's planned for next year. Uh, but uh, there are people on board, this is the first uh, test flight, EFT-1, engineering test flight 1, uh, and then uh, the, the next will be uh, EM-1. So that's a big powerful rocket. And um, the, uh, the Orion capsule is going to facilitate us building our next space station. Uh, NASA is currently working on a space station called the Gateway. And the Gateway is to be placed out beyond the moon at the uh, Lagrange point, uh, around the Lagrange point L2, um, on the far side of the world. Uh, engineering applies math, science, and technology, and logic, uh, to realize practical systems. something like this, I don't want you to be scared, you know. Uh, sure, it may not be intelligible when you first look at it, but, uh, but take advantage of the education that's available to you. Uh, it really just enables you to do more. And, uh, and the reason I mentioned, you know, how much older I am than you, uh, I would encourage you to think about uh, what you're going to, what your life is going to be like in 10 years, what your life is going to be like in 20 years, and uh, just consider. Consider how you can pursue what you're interested in, even if it's not, not in STEM. 
Um, I want to encourage you to do that. And now we're going to talk a little bit about robotics. Uh, so, I know that robotics is a very popular subject these days. Uh, so in robotics, um, we have manipulators. And so, uh, those are robot arms. Uh, we have also mobile robots. And uh, the real kind of mobile robot is the, the most common, I think. However, um, there are a lot of other kinds. There are flying robots, there are crawling robots, there are, um, there are many different types of locomotion, and uh, people have explored uh, all of them that I'm aware of um, doing with robots. Biologically inspired systems like uh, robotic fish swimming around. Um, so, so when you combine manipulation and uh, mobile robots, you get a mobile manipulation robot. So, when we're talking about robots, um, those are terms that are used in, in the field of robotics. Um, so, uh, what about mobile manipulation in space? Uh, so, uh, my group designed and built this robot called Robonaut. And uh, Robonaut is a humanoid. It's, it's shaped like a human. Uh, the upper body uh, is the scale of, I believe, a 90th percentile human. So it's, it's like a large human. And then we built these special legs for climbing. So the way that you get around in, uh, in microgravity requires climbing. I know it's not human. It's not human scale, so it might be a little bit, a little bit odd. But it's an effective way to get around the space. And um, we, we look at robotics uh, for, uh, as human assistance. Uh, in Houston, the NASA Center is focused on human space exploration. So we build robots that support that. And uh, so here is a proposed uh, astronaut assistant role uh, on Mars. We saw the uh, robot installing, installing something on the road there. with industry, and uh, in, this, in this case, we're showing that uh, the glove can help prevent uh, repetitive stress injuries uh, for people who work on assembly lines. And uh, we're also looking at installing the same actuators in the spacesuit, because if you can imagine you're in an inflated bag, it's like a balloon. When you try to close your hands in the spacesuit gloves, it requires a lot of force. 
So uh, sometimes the astronauts even wear up or break off their fingernails you know, working during the EVA. It's very strenuous. And so we want to bring that robotics technology to uh, next generation spaces. Thank you. 